It would not be even 50 years after Confederation that the young nation of Canada would enter one of the bloodiest conflicts of the 20th century. The world was ushering in a new age of social and technological progress. Canada's role would also be decided. Should Canada remain close with Britain and her Commonwealth and reap the benefits of that relationship or finally step out from the shadows and attempt to join the international stage on its own accord. On August 12, 1914, Britain entered the war and brought her colonies, including Canada, into the fray. Canadian reactions were mostly in support of joining the war alongside Britain. Canadian imperialists believed that they would be fighting a just war against Germany a power that endangered values of democracy and liberty. However, opposition to the war persisted at home. Canadians, particularly of Quebecois heritage, like Wilfred Laurier and Henry Bourassa, believed that imperialists were hypocritical, as the government imprisoned foreign aliens and silenced dissent as their part of the war effort. Regardless, Prime Minister Robert Borden supported the war effort forming a united party of conservatives and liberals called unionists in 1917 to keep the war effort going. At the front, Canadian soldiers took part in several pivotal battles, most notably the Second Battle of Ypres, the Battle of Vimy Ridge, and the Battle of Passchendaele. At the Second Battle of Ypres, German forces used gas weaponry for the first time on the Western Front, but were unable to achieve their operational objectives against Canadians that were able to maintain the defensive perimeter. During the Battle of Vimy Ridge, Canadian commanders successfully implemented a creeping barrage, a tactic in where infantry would slowly advance behind the cover of an advancing artillery bombardment. Two years later in 1917, at the Third Battle of Ypres, more commonly known as the Battle of Passchendaele, Canadian forces played a significant role in the Allied advance, being the ones to capture the town of Passchendaele itself. Despite being discouraged from joining the fight by the Canadian government, indigenous peoples like Francis Pega Magabo would volunteer for the army. He would eventually become the most effective sniper on the Western Front, accumulating about 378 kills and responsible for the capture of over 300 enemy soldiers. In addition to the fighting, over 2,000 Canadian women served as nurses overseas close to the battlefields of Europe. They would prove invaluable, setting up field hospitals and caring for both the wounded and the dead. On the home front, men and women would play important roles in various industries such as shipbuilding and munitions assembly. After the fighting had ceased on November 11, 1918, Prime Minister Robert Borden ensured that Canada would have a separate, independent seat at the 1919 Paris Peace Conference. This would eventually lead to Canada having its own separate seat at the League of Nations. To this day, many historians debate the impact the First World War had on Canadian national identity. Was it the pivotal event that allowed the world to see Canada as a nation in its own right? Or was it just another factor that would eventually lead to Canadian independence through the Canada Act in 1982?